I'm Alex Lavelle. You might know me as a co-host of weekly comic book review podcast Panelology, Animorphs reread podcast Minds at Yerk, or the Rob Thomas deep dive podcast The Rob Thomas, no, not that one, Robcast. Even less likely you might know me from the Atlanta theater scene. The majority of you don't know me though, and that's okay, because I'm not here to talk about me. I'm here to talk about my love for Tales of Symphonia. I don't remember exactly how Tales of Symphonia wound up on my radar. I had never heard of the franchise before Symphonia. In fact, only two earlier entries had made it to the US before 2004. Tales of Destiny and Tales of Eternia, released for the PS1 as Tales of Destiny and Tales of Destiny 2. Tales of Fantasia, the series' first game on the Super Famicom, would eventually see a Game Boy Advance release in 2006, and the actual Tales of Destiny 2 remains the only main series Tales game not to have been released outside of Japan. Those games also share a development history with the Star Ocean franchise, which I wouldn't discover for another couple of years. So I didn't come to Tales of from that either. The simple answer is that it was either one of the many now-defunct video game news websites that high school me frequented in 2004, or Nintendo Power that put the game on my radar, because I did manage to finagle a launch copy. Shout out to the EB Games manager who helped me snag an unclaimed pre-order copy, because I did fail to pre-order the game at a time when doing so really mattered for obscure titles like this. And as strange as it might sound now, when Tales games enjoy regular Western releases, command time in E3 presentations, and find themselves ported to multiple consoles, in 2004 this was an obscure franchise in the US. Even with Symphonia's success, subsequent titles in the franchise would only erratically make it out of Japan until the 2010s. The fact that Tales of games weren't very well known in the US at the time is actually important to what it means to me, but first, a confession. I might have lied a little bit earlier when I said I'm not here to talk about me. I can't talk about why I love this game without telling you a little bit about who I was in 2004. I've played video games my entire life. I got an NES for Christmas when I was two years old. In retrospect, this clearly was an excuse for my father to buy the latest gadget, but I definitely logged more time on it than he ever did. From then on, games were a part of my life, but they were a part of my life that had mostly just been for me. There was no gaming culture that I was aware of in my hometown in elementary or middle school. Even when I got on board with Pokemon, it was about six months after the games came out in the US and the kids I went to school with had decided, incorrectly, that it was lame. I didn't care, but I kept it to myself. By high school, I had friends who I also knew played video games. And we talked about them when we had downtime in class, or we hung out at each other's houses to play them. High school was also when I found myself, a teenager who was good at fixing computers for adults who didn't really understand computers, with disposable income. So I was able to start buying games regularly beyond asking for a game or two for a birthday or Christmas. I was the only person in any of my friend groups, real life or the Pokemon related corners of the internet I hung on around and made friends in, who picked up a copy of Tales of Symphonia at launch. That put me in a position I had never been in before. I was able to introduce my friends to this game. If you do happen, however improbably, to know me, then you know I love introducing the people around me to media that I think they will dig. Tales of Symphonia was the first time I could do that with video games. Sometimes that meant instant messaging friends in other time zones about where they were in the game, what they thought of it, how they thought the story might shake out, or whatever. Other times, it meant plugging in a second controller and backing up my best friend while they played through the game for the first time. I'm not sure Absent inviting me to talk from approximately 5 to 18 minutes about a favorite video game that I actually would have realized that the circumstances of sharing this game was so central to my experience playing it originally, but here we are. Regardless of the form that sharing it took, it became a huge part of my experience with it. That's as close to nostalgic as I care to be, so let's talk about the game itself. Why did I foist this on my closest friends? In simple terms, it was unlike anything I had ever played. There was a novelty to it that immediately made it feel special. I had played RPGs before Tales of Symphonia, but it was the first I played that could be described as an action RPG. The basic loop of the Tales of franchise involves random battles, but instead of turn-based combat, 
Your party and the enemy party were thrown into a linear plane in which you could move left and right, jump, and stab at each other in various ways. Think Super Smash Brothers and you're most of the way there. Symphonia introduced a key change to that system, however, a third dimension. The character you controlled targeted a single enemy at a time. You and they were in a fixed 2D plane, but at any time you could switch targets and shift planes. The net effect was that the battles took place across a 3D battlefield, and it felt active, frenetic, and strategic in a way that turn-based role-playing games, which I still love to this day, did not. I'm not sure that my describing nearly 20-year-old video game mechanics to you makes for the most interesting podcasting, but here are some of the other high notes that make Tales of Symphony a fun, satisfying game to play. Every member of your party of, eventually, eight is playable, and they all play differently. In fact, each of them has branching sets of abilities based on your playstyle. I replayed the game almost right away after I beat it just so I could go through it again, unlocking other kinds of skills mixing and matching different sets of skills at a time to see how that affected the way I played the game. The other reason for that second playthrough was a choice in the middle of the game that results in one of two possible party members betraying you, leaving the team, and becoming your enemy as the story unfolded. Both of those choices hit hard in their own ways. Making multiple playthroughs easier is an in-game scoring system that has no bearing on your playthrough but which accumulates as currency for a shop that unlocks when you select New Game Plus. You can pass on various unlockables like titles that boost your stats, your levels, equipment, skills, recipes, and the number of enemies you've defeated, or increase or decrease the amount of experience you earn. In preparing to record this, I dusted off an old GameCube memory card to play through at least a little of the game again, and I was shocked to learn that I had played through the game completely five times between solo runs and playing with friends. I can't imagine playing a 50 to 60 hour RPG five times over just a couple of years now, but I have proof that this game earned that. I've mentioned playing this game with friends a couple of times now, so here's another feature that felt revolutionary in 2004. You could play Tales of Symphonia solo and, at any time, plug in additional controllers to add more players, with each of them taking control of one of the four party members in a given fight. The idea of multiplayer in an RPG was surprising enough to me, but something so casual as drop-in multiplayer was inconceivable. It was also really nice for those boss fights that might have otherwise meant passing the controller to someone else to try to beat. You could work together, and since two humans and two CPUs will almost always be more effective than one human and three CPUs, that was usually enough to make progress. I've debated how much I want to say here about the game's story and characters. To talk about what happens would be to spoil some moments best left for you to experience yourself. But the themes that stuck with me will, I believe, hold up. Refusal to let a friend sacrifice themselves to a system that does not care. Imagining a future that's better than the present. Refusing to accept suffering as necessary and fighting back against the systems built upon it. I cannot, in good faith, claim that my 17-year-old self-play tells of Symphony and immediately became more politically conscious. But looking back on the game, my appreciation for it is only strengthened by its focus on these themes. And don't get me wrong, I'm not here to claim Tales of Symphony was the first game to find a way to make social stratification literal through its storytelling choices. It wasn't even the first Tales of game to do it. It just did it well, and it did it memorably. As for its characters, they're all pretty great. Shout out to the one true Kratos, no matter what God of War tells me, and the swift-kicking Regal Bryant, a former prisoner who chose not to fight with his hands because he values metaphor. I felt compelled to learn to play as each and every member of the party, not just because they all handled differently, but because I liked all of them. And I spent enough time with each of them to handle the single-player Colosseum mode as any of them. All get strong character moments throughout the game and feel distinct in combat. Even the two who play similarly mechanically because you can only make it to the end with one of them. But the real selling points are their relationships with each other. Take Lloyd and Colette, the prototypical small town RPG sword fighter and the chosen one healer intended to be a sacrifice to the angels who look over the world. That sounds much weirder out loud than on paper, but that's RPGs, folks. What could easily feel like a trite boy saves girl setup, 
which full disclosure could be more the case than I remember it to be because I didn't make it through the entire game again, is built around moments of each trying to protect the other and ultimately only making progress by working together and respecting each other's autonomy as a person. I've buried what would have been the lead in 2004, but Tales of Symphonia is a gorgeous game. I'm sure that the cel-shaded style choice came out of necessity given the GameCube hardware's constraints, but not only was this one of the best looking games of its generation, it actually still looks surprisingly good. And at the time, seeing the cartoony character models that looked recognizably like their concept art felt revolutionary. I've hung my living room TV on a wall in a way that does not let me access anything but HDMI ports. So I played this using a cheap HDMI adapter that plugs into the Wii. I expected that trying to run this game into a fairly new 4K TV through that adapter would age it into dust. But actually it still looked good. Really good. No one's going to mistake it for a contemporary game, least of all the overworld map where generic sprites do the heavy lifting as you travel between cities, dungeons, and other locales. But inside of those places, and in combat, it remains smooth, stylish, and vibrant. With Tales of Arise coming out later this year, I've noticed more talk of Symphonia lately than I'm accustomed to, whether in the form of folks online mentioning it as the franchise's high watermark, or in the recent announcement of a Lloyd Irving Mii Fighter costume for Smash Bros. Ultimate. On an aside, I can also credit Tales of Symphonia for my fondness, casual as it may be, for fighting games. I've also been surprised at just how difficult it is to play Tales of Symphonia as a console gamer in 2021. Your options are the GameCube version or a PS3 remaster, neither of which will play on contemporary consoles. It is, however, on Steam, and I have to imagine other PC gaming platforms, but that's not a world I'm particularly well-versed in. If you haven't played it before, hopefully something I've said in the last 12 or 13 minutes entices you to check it out. If not, well, maybe it's at least been entertaining for you. But either way, happy gaming.